Wasn't there a flash rush episode where we beat the game by mistake? Yeah, it's like episode three, I think, where I went to the credits and uh, there is a button to replay game in there and it just brings you to the end screen where we accidentally beat the game by going to the credits on the main screen. Anyway, uh, hunting rifle. Yeah, this uses uh, .223 caliber shots. 10 shots, a full metal jacket. Weighs about 11 pounds. Uh, how much ammo do we have of that kind? We have 100 shots of that. Okay, so I'm not worried at all about conserving that ammo. For the sake of this area, I will keep my pistol on my other hand just for cleaning up rats and stuff. Um, okay. In fact, we'll take it out. So switching between your two hands doesn't take any AP points in combat. So you have two items you can sw swap between for free. What would you say is the worst episode of Flash Rush? Oh, I'm not sure. I can tell you what my favorite episode is. I have a lot of episodes I love, but my favorite, and I don't even know why, because it was like the least remarkable game in the world, but me and Brandon were on a roll that day. Everybody watching this, whether you're familiar with the channel or not, nice, is that another 50? 15. Still good. Uh, just YouTube search Flash Trash, uh... Risk Subway Escape. It is the most mundane game in the world, and yet for some reason I am to this day like I don't rewatch much of my stuff after I've edited it and uploaded it. I'm just like, you know, it, it's weird watching your own content sometimes, but I just go back and watch that a few times every year, and I will genuinely laugh out loud. It's just a fucking funny one. Gonna pick the Jinx trait. Have fun with it. Jinx trait is one of those traits I recommend. Um, if you've already beaten the game before and you just want a really goofy playthrough, do Jinxed with one luck. Or I think Jinxed might give you one luck anyway, but it's really unlucky shit will randomly happen to you all the time, but it will also happen to everybody around you. Every battle is completely unreliable, but it also becomes a fun game of, uh... Everybody's just constantly hitting critical failures because it's a d20 system and so it's rolling dice in the background Everyone is constantly getting critical failures. So people's guns misfire and jam People will shoot each other by mistake People will misfire and drop their gun on the ground and you can pick it up like it's just goofy shit constantly It's really funny. Okay, that's another 15 rifle shots anything insidious and impossible to see in here. No that locker right there I want to get to because that's where I can get a leather jacket, which is the first piece of armor in the game. And we'll need that for getting dog meat. So for anyone who doesn't know, uh, this is a reference to a movie I love. A series of movies I love, actually. Uh, although I've only seen the first three. I never watched the new one. Mad Max. The reason this has one sleeve is from Mad Max 2. Um, it's because at, near the end of Mad Max, um, Mad Max always wears... Uh, a leather jacket, his arms run over. And so in the second movie, the sleeve is missing and it's never outright stated, but it's implied that, you know, the hospital would have to cut off the sleeve to get to his arm to treat it. Cause that's what you, in the hospital, you don't like to rip someone's clothing off cause you don't want to jostle the body part. You just cut the sleeve off. And so it's always been speculated that that was just a really cool attention to detail. Okay, I don't think anything's in there. And we're almost done this floor. I'm clearing the whole place of enemies to get a lot of experience. You'll notice I reload very often. It's just because I have the AP and nothing else to spend it on. Nope. Nice. So those have about nine health. Never seen Mad Max? Mad Max 1 is very good, although uh, it's not very much like Mad Max 2. They're both very good movies and very different movies. In retrospect, Mad Max 1 is almost, almost entirely feels like a movie entirely to set up the character of Max. It almost feels like it would have been made later as a prequel to explain how Max got to be the person he is. It's very strange. 
Considering it's, it's not a prequel, it, it actually was the first movie made in the series. That and Mad Max 1 isn't exactly post-apocalyptic like you might think it is. The other main movie this game is inspired by is A Boy and His Dog, which is a very good post-apocalyptic movie. If you've ever wondered why your pet dog in every Fallout game is called, um, did, did it not? I think it's because Ian got in the fucking way. Um, the reason your dog is called Dog Meat is uh, in the movie A Boy and His Dog, you're never actually told the name of the main character or his dog. They never call each other by their name. They just yell at each other a lot. Uh, but uh, it is implied that... Uh, oh, that's odd. It spawned over there. Usually that guy spawns right here. Weird. Uh, but, but, you know, it's implied you never learn the name, that the name isn't actually dog meat, it's just a derogatory name. But, uh, the fact that your dog is called dog meat in this game is a reference to that. Wow, the mole rats are really coming out. Okay, I'm gonna switch to my rifle then, just to make sure I'm killing them. Rifle has the same picture as the shotgun in this game. Just because they can only afford so many sprites. Alright, I'm actually gonna move right here just so I'm not accidentally shooting Ian. Oh! Ian got crit there! He took 12 damage and fell over, and then another 4? Fuck, how hurt is he? He has 25 health out of 50. He's fine. And that, now, the greater mole right down the hall, the boss's place has 26. Do I have the skill to get him in the eyes? No, 34% chance. I could get the head, maybe. I'm gonna get him in the right leg to hope to slow him down. Hit him. Right leg hit for 16 damage. That puts him at almost dead. I'll finish him off. Ian's getting fucked up. Ian just popped a stim pack. Okay, we'll do an unnamed... Oop. Uh, unnamed shot. Which is just you fire for whatever you can hit, but you've got the most accuracy. And it's dead. 320 experience, not bad. Still not as good as fighting mole rats. Or, um... Oh, that was a miss. Still not as good as fighting, uh... Red scorpions. Little bit of ammo in the rubble there. 10 millimeter armor piercing. Which is a pretty crap ammo. It's pretty much only worth it in an SMG. And really, if the thing... If armor is your concern... You should probably just be using a better weapon. Has Ian not shot M to be in the back yet? Because I haven't given him an SMG. No mind, you can he can shoot me with a pistol, but if you give him an SMG, fucking you'll be reloading saves like it's nothing. In fact, there's an SMG in one of those lockers. And I might just hold on to it. The SMG is the exact same thing as the 10mm pistol, except for it also has burst fire and it has a larger magazine. Grenades and uh, timed explosives, which are very nice. You can set the timer of an explosive, hit steel, and put it in someone's pocket, which is really fun. I might give an SMG to Ian at some point. But for now, I am unloading my pistol. And taking the SMG, which is loaded. It's just sitting in a cabinet already loaded. That's not safe. All right, so here's a place for some easy experience that some people don't know about. I'm just gonna walk over here a bit. There we go. If you just walk up to this wall, you get experience. 500 experience. You are able to determine that the command and control center is definitely buried under more rock. You'll have to look for a water chip elsewhere, because this in a regular vault is where the command center is and where the water chip would be. And right there is a crowbar on the ground that looks suspiciously like a nightstick. Uh, we actually can't carry it right now. Oh, we're getting uh, a raid from Bogart. Thanks, Bogart. I appreciate it. Um, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Bogart is the guy who is in our playthrough of... Um, yeah, I don't even care about that item. Uh, he's in our playthrough of Resident Evil Outbreak and Outbreak File 2. He's got his own really good stream. So everybody go follow, uh, everybody go follow Bogart if you're there live as well. 
See you, Sassarus. Hope you sleep well. And for anyone coming in from Bogart's stream, hey, I'm MDB. Uh, I play Fallout 1 and 2 through every single year since high school, just as a tradition. So I've beaten this game like nine years in a row or something, eight or nine years. Uh, I've probably beaten the game about 12 times grand total. And this year I'm just doing it on air, because it's fun. I love this game. It's a good tradition. I agree. And we did find the super hidden rifle, before anyone asks. There is a rifle hidden in Vault 15 that is so fucking hidden, it would blow your mind. Don't shoot me, you cunt. All right, uh, yep. Oops, you were hit instead of Pig Rat. You were hit for eight hit points. That's Ian's first time hitting us this playthrough. We didn't give him the SMG for a reason, although we might later, just to increase our damage output. Ian is infamous in this game for forcing you to reload saves because he shoots you a lot. He's not a good teammate. But the, th the funny thing is, despite how he hits you so much, he has shitloads of, uh, of small gun skill. So he's actually really, really accurate. Like, he can hit enemies from across the map really easily with, with quite inaccurate weapons. We're almost done, Vault 15. It's not a very big area. Almost done. I forget, can we use science on this computer right here? No, you failed to learn anything. <clears throat> I think that was in Fallout 2 that you can use science on a computer in a very similar looking area. Ian can hit his teammate really accurately, too. I agree. Oop, not burst. Just wanted to reload. Uh, reload is a weapon setting, by the way. It's just a weird UI thing. You just keep right-clicking through your weapon to go through the different weapon settings. Counts as a fire type, which is incredibly strange. All right, this rat's the last enemy in the whole place. There we go. We've cleaned out all of Vault 15. Every enemy here is dead. And we have every piece of loot we care about. I'm sure there's like a bullet laying around somewhere that I haven't seen, but I don't care. I've got the rifle, I've got the armor, and I've got the SMG. Those are the things I really wanted. And we're allowed to open carry our gun when we get back to town, so that's fine. Because Shady Sands doesn't care about open carrying a weapon. I like to think that in Laurel, Ian just hates you. Actually, Ian was supposed to be in Fallout 2, but he was part of cut content. The restoration fan patch put all the cut content back in the game. Uh, that Because the developers were very open about saying everything that was missing. Including putting Ian back in the game, which I thought was very cool. So you'll get to see that, because when I play the second game, I'm using restoration patch. Um, so, so Ian is in Vault City, in the tavern, in that. Because the thing is, the memoirs, the official canon memoirs... Uh, the Vault Dweller say that Ian died to a flamethrower in Necropolis from a super mutant. But uh, Ian in the second game says that he just wanted to live a quiet life and retire, so he asked for the Vault Dweller to say that he died going out in a blaze of glory. So he literally had him get set on fire in a blaze of glory, which is funny. All right, let's uh, go back to Shady Sands, and we'll have our final Shady Sands quest here now that... Um, if you save them from Red Scorpions and wait two days, that is the requirement for the next quest. Uh, it's been more than two days, though. I've been hit, and I was not poisoned this time, so I'm just gonna fucking one-shot him. Burst Fire gets multiple hits, so we did 64 damage, which is so much more than the health of this thing. It's also a crit roll in every bullet, by the way, so if you're a crit build, use Burst Fire weapons, and you can fuck up Anything. Wouldn't Ian be really old in two? Yeah, uh, Ian explains it as he spends so much time around the irradiated vats from Fallout 1 that he's probably part ghoul. It's a lame explanation, but it works. He was just for fan service. Alright, we're healthy again, though, because time passes very fast while traveling on the map, and so we naturally healed up. 
All right, we're just gonna go talk to Aridesh to start the final quest in Shady Sands. It shouldn't be too much of an issue as long as Ian doesn't play like a fucking idiot. Thank goodness you came. I am in desperate need of assistance. My daughter Tandy is missing. I do not know what to do. I mean, that's pretty scary, but can you tell me about the Vipers again? Be very careful with such as these. Raiders who are fanatically religious can be quite dangerous. No one here knows of their base. Thanks, I needed that reminder. But have you tried to save her? My people are not skilled in this. Already three patrols have gone out to look, but none returned. Will you help me? I can't really say I have heard of that. Oh, you don't know what farms are? You've got one. Okay. Uh, okay, who could have taken her? Seth and I believe one of the raider clans is responsible. Retribution for our resistance to them. Take this spear. It was found where my daughter was last seen. Okay, I'll check it Please, out. Please, talk to Seth. He knows much about these raiders. And Godspeed, Wanderer. Well, this medicine cure Amphi? Hmm. No, no, I have not heard of that. I didn't think so either. All right, uh, did he actually give me the spear or is it too heavy? He actually gave it to me, even though I'm fairly sure there's too much weight for me to carry. I'm at 177 total weight. What's my cap? 175! It glitched it and gave me more items than I can actually hold. That's interesting. The spear is a passable melee weapon. I I would say the sledgehammer is better. The sledgehammer is better if you're fighting other melee enemies because it knocks them away. Uh, but it's not good against melee enemies because then you need- or against uh, ranged enemies because then you gotta run after them. As about ghouls, you might need info. That info. I think we'll just go save Tandy. I know where she is. Uh, I believe Ian can actually tell me the location. Um. Nope, never mind. Wait. Raiders. There's several several groups of raiders that are there. Um, the most organized group is the Khans. They seem to think they can conquer the whole world or something. Khans. There's a sorry group of raiders who attack Shady Sands and think they're going to take over the world or some crap. All right. I've got two good weapons for this. Okay, so we didn't end up getting it marked on our map. I think there's someone you can talk to for that. Actually, you know what? Let me talk to Seth. Seth's dating Tandy. I'll talk to him. Uh, thank you, Dharma. Uh, you're here, Wanderer, my girl. Uh, Tandy, Aradesh's daughter, has been kidnapped. We believe the raiders have her. Where are these raiders? They're to the southeast. Please hurry. I don't know what they'll do. Um, okay, I'll help her. I'll help get her back. I think that might have marked it on my map. Thanks for following, uh, Miser? Miser? Welcome to the flock. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Yep, that marked it off. They're right here. They're very close. These raiders are cons, I believe. So, drugs, prostitutes, stuff like that. Yep, they're the cons. You can join the cons if you're a low karma character. There's actually a few quests you can do around here that even the wiki don't have marked off with talking to people in tents, which is very cool. Uh, we're not gonna do them. We're not siding with the cons. Better uh, put that away. Right, he doesn't want me open carrying a gun. Put that thing away, go talk to him. Is it because he has his gun out? Oh, man. Oops. Uh. Oh, I can't tell him to uh, put his gun away. What weapons are you skilled with? And he's our pistol. Yep, know how to handle a knife. Whatever, I'm just gonna take my guns out. I don't remember if he actually just open attacks. I'm fairly sure he doesn't. That's generic dialogue. Oh, hey, he attacked me. Um, I don't want that to happen yet. So what I'm gonna do. Barter. Actually, I don't think I can take the gun right out of his hand. No. <laughs> Try your next weapon next time we're in the battle. Nope. Uh, what I'm gonna do is steal. You cannot get there. Yes, I can. Pathfinding just sucks. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Sorry. They saw me. Not- they saw me with a gun out for too long. 
Freaking follower inventory. I know, right? Oh god, he fucking. Mm, I can't get him to put his gun away. Uh, does anyone remember if I can just tell him to fuck off? And he won't just disappear forever. I actually don't remember how that works. Usually I do this without Ian. Um, you can leave now. See you around. Okay, he's not in the party. Put the thing away and go talk to him. Okay, what happens? I'm good. Okay, I have no idea why he attacked then. All right, another experiment. Gun is away. I'm going in. Is it just glitchy? It might be. The Fallout 1 and 2 are notoriously glitchy. Ian, get in the room first. Thank you. What do you want? Okay, this is their leader, Garl. Um, we get bonus experience if the prostitutes in this room live. Who are these two? <clears throat> Although it's very easy for them to get killed as collateral or for the, um, or for the raiders to just shoot her for fun. Uh, I want you to set the girl free. Well then, what do you offer for her release? Uh, I represent a threat that you don't even understand. Do you really want to risk our wrath? Hmm, for some reason I believe you. You may take the girl, but do not return unless you seek our wrath. Let's get out of here. And we're gonna come back and save the other girls later. So that was a speech check. If you fail that speech check, I believe they just attack, laugh and attack you. There we go. You can hear us leveling up. Speech checks are important in Fallout games. Uh, I want to be... yeah, entrance. There you go, we leveled. And let me just see here. Speech, yeah, we do want more speech. As a reasonably high priority, we'll get that up to 81 now. I'm happy with this small gun skill for now. I'm happy with this lockpick skill for now. So I'm going to start investing in energy weapons early. It'll take a long time to get decent energy weapon skill, but we need it by the end of the game. Hey, Tandy. Hi. I was afraid that you were gone and I wasn't going to get a chance to thank you for rescuing me. Oh, that was great! Action! Adventure! Anyway, if there's anything that I can do for you, you just ask. Nope, that's it. Thanks. Well, thanks for talking. We don't get many strangers here, so it's always good to talk to new people. Well, see ya. I'm not one of you perverts there in the chat who would try and hit on her. Our entire town is grateful for you for destroying the red scorpions. Thank you. You're not going to bring up that I also saved your girlfriend? <laughs> Ask her about heterosexuality. Yeah, you, you can you can ask to fuck and she'll just be like, I'm not that kind of woman. <laughs> like, like, who do you take me for? I will be forever in your debt for your courage and bravery, Wanderer. Here is your reward. Until we meet again, my friend. May the water you find in the desert not shine at you in the dark. That's really good dialogue, actually. All right. Uh, I believe what he gave us is some caps. Uh, yeah, we have a ton of caps now. He gave us uh, caps, which is really nice, actually. Um, that's a really easy and good reward. And, uh, now all we need to go do is go to Junktown next. However, uh, I actually want to kill some dudes. So we're gonna go save the prostitutes for some extra experience. Uh, so first I'm gonna barter with Seth because I know he's got some money. Yeah, he's got some caps. Uh, I just want to offload some of these tails. How much do you pay for each? Okay. Dump another three on there and just give me 40. Yeah, I'm fine with that. The more barter skill you have, the more value everything has when you're buying and selling. Like, you know, you can buy his stuff for cheaper and your stuff is worth more. It's not super useful. If you really want to, you can pretty much just max out gambling in either game and have nearly infinite money once you find a casino. That's especially useful in the second game where casinos are much more common. So there's a lot of dialogue you can have with the raiders if you do join the cons. Um, but I'm gonna kill them all. 
I'm gonna save the girls. Are these both reloaded? Yep. Now, they might just immediately shoot the girls in there when I start firing. I don't think they will. So we're just gonna see what I can get away with. Most of these guys use spears anyway. I'm gonna try starting the fight from out here. Probably not gonna hit, but we'll try. I have tons of ammo. We got him. Eight damage. How much health does he have? 33 total, wearing leather armor. That's rough. We might not be good enough to do this yet, but if we're not good enough to do this yet, we do come back here later. We'll see what we can get away with. Don't shoot me, Ian. Can't get them in the eyes from here. If they get in melee range, I'm pointing this barrel right down their eye. Nice. I believe we get karma every time we kill a raider, by the way. Misfire. Right in the eye. Fuck it, I'm doing it. Yeah! Raider is critically hit in the eyes for 42 damage, blinding him with a stunning blow. The others didn't aggro yet? Alright. Get him to aggro. So, uh, eye shots are the same damage as headshots, I believe, except uh, with a really high crit chance. Missed again. Yeah, don't run up there, Ian, because I can't necessarily save you from two dudes coming up on your flank. Ian, I appreciate that you're still trying to kill the guy who's coming after me. Wow, they threw the spear. Oh, that one's got a gun. Ian only took 16 damage that round. That's not bad. Don't let him run. Yeah, I don't want him getting away. He reloaded. All right, good. He's smart. He's going after the gun guy. The knife chick's dangerous, but the gun guy's worse. His name is uh, Petrox, right? He's one of the ones you can talk to for quest stuff. Uh, can't you kill a Deathclaw with a flare gun shot to the eye? I don't remember. I remember in this game, though, Deathclaws are fucking awful to fight if you're small guns. Because they just have so much armor, and there aren't really any super high damage small guns in Fallout 1. Fallout 2, you can small guns the whole game without any kind of, like, super specialized build. There we go. Popped a stim pack? Good. All right, Ian, get over here. Oh, we're trading. Fucking Ian, stop walking. Ian, stop walking. Ian, stop walking. Okay. There. Give you another two stim packs and give you one pack of ammo, which is like 15 shots or something. I'm going to save over temp, which is actually the ending of the game uh, from one of the times I needed to get footage. Leather armor, which is a pretty solid armor. Some caps, some mentats, those are good. All right, leather armor is an upgrade from my leather jacket in every way, but I do need to still carry my old leather jacket for a while. I believe leather armor sells for a bit, although it's a little heavy, so we're gonna carry some spares, but it's not, we don't, we're not gonna be like dropping everything just to collect them. I will drop a tail though, I don't need that. My friend is addicted to this game growing up and had a small gun crit build and killed Deathclaws with a flare gun shot to the eye. Yeah, it's cool. There's some cool builds you can do in this. Whiskey bottle, I believe that sells well for its weight. And a magnum, which is a pretty good weapon for uh, Ian at this point in the game. I will actually give that to him because he's not any more likely to hit me with that than a 10 millimeter. But he will do more damage with it. So what I need to tell him to do is draw your best weapon when we go into battle. Right, that's what makes him put away his weapon, isn't it? I think it might be. Puts away his weapon so he automatically draws his best. 